these songs are like songs from other places, but I made an arrangement of them and I put them all together. Amen. And I made some different chords.
come within me all my life take over come breathe in me and I will rise on eagle wings. here I am waiting Hide me in your love, bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. Come live in me all my life. So we're in uh, uh, tonight, we're still in the life of Jacob and uh, the old supplanter, the deceiver, the liar, you name it. He's got all the signs of the old Adamic nature, which works in every one of us. Amen. Comes out in our communication. Uh, that's why you ought to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Hey, you hear that, Jimmy? Amen. Slow to speak, buddy. Amen. And uh, God will bless you for it. Amen. So we're in Genesis chapter number 20, uh, chapter 30. And uh, we're dealing with uh, uh, verse 25 uh, where Jacob decides to stay with Laban. Because if you look at that last verse in verse 43, And the man increased exceedingly. Who's that? Jacob. And had much cattle, and maid servants, men servants, and camels, and asses. Amen. That's donkeys, by the way. Amen. Uh, I like the King James English. Amen. He calls them asses. Amen. You would. That's an interesting study on asses if you want to want to study up on something. Man is likened to a dumb ass. Amen. So, anyway, uh, it's an inter interesting study. But old Jacob's blessed, man. And Laban knows uh, by experience that God has blessed that man. Amen. And you'll see this in these uh, starting in verse number 25 as we continue our narrative in Genesis 30, 25 through 43. Jacob stays with Laban. Amen. Uh, first, uh, we'll see here where it came to pass, verse 25, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob uh, said unto Laman, Laban, send me away, that I may go into mine own place and to my country. He wanted to get out of Dodge. Fourteen years, he'd worked to have two wives, ends up getting four because their handmaids come in. 
And by the way, those handmaids, the reason why they didn't get to name the children, because it was the same as Rachel and Leah birthing those two children into this world. Amen. They were handmaids. They were uh, bond. They owed everything to those two ladies. Amen. And I uh, uh, thank you, God, for that. Amen. But anyway, now he says uh, first here, Joseph. Joseph will become one of the greatest types of Jesus Christ. Doc said there's over 150 particulars about which, uh, which I, I know nothing about. Amen. I maybe have found 50 in reading through Joseph's life there, starting in, when he get, goes into Egypt and all that stuff like that. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm not as much acquainted with the Gospels to know the life of Jesus now, if I wanted to sit down and get a concordance and study and all, I mean, and go through all four of the Gospels, amen, maybe, but I'm not a Ph.D., amen. I'm a good post hole digger, but I don't have a Ph.D., and I'm not, uh, my mind, uh, you know, comes and goes, and uh, Dr. Ruckman has an has a, a, a IQ of maybe 150 or more, amen, and he's given us a Bible, and I recommend it to every young man, amen, if he goes into the ministry to keep himself right on doctrine, I recommend that Bible, this Bible right here, amen. amen. Uh, you know I read from it, I quote from it, I'm not ashamed, amen. I ain't the sharpest block on the rock, amen. But anyway, 150 particulars which I have not found in his life, uh, as the life of Jesus Christ. But he's a great type. And he's born of Rachel, Joseph. And we found out that he had two uh, uh, sources that his name came from. Uh, both uh, were taken uh, away. And that's what he said in verse number 23. And then there was an addition, which means his brother was born uh, to uh, Rachel. So the 12 tribes of Israel are now sealed. Amen. The oldest, Reuben, Simon, and Levi. Amen. They're the oldest boys, maybe getting close to teenage years. And the others battle on down. Amen. We don't know. But anyway. Verse number 26. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. Amen. I don't know of any Americans today would labor seven years for a woman to marry her. Amen. They ain't got that much patience. Amen. They don't want to wait that long. Amen. But anyway, he did 14 years. Amen. Labored and God prospered him. God blessed him. And Laban knew that. Amen. Uh, 26, Jacob has labored for Rachel and Leah 14 years and wants to leave and go home with what he's got. We don't know how much he's got. We know that after another seven years, it's going to be 20 years before he gets back to his mama, and by that time, she's dead. Amen. But anyway, we don't know. But he labors that whole time. Verse number 27 and Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I found favor in thine eyes, grace is unmerited favor. Amen. Amen. And so old Laban's realizing that by experience, uh, hey, uh, I'm messing with somebody who knows God. Amen. Amen. And uh, Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Amen. I want to be a blessing to people. Yeah. Amen. I really do. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the blessed is the man. Amen. Uh, the, the blessings have come. I want to be a blessing. Amen. God helped me to do that. My damnic nature gets in the way a lot of times. Amen. But I really want to be a blessing to everyone I go by and try to be a blessing to them. Amen. And so he learned by experience. By experience, labor and sees God had blessed Jacob and he asked for favor or grace in his eyes. 
Jacob now has the Abrahamic blessing of Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where he said, I'll bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All the families, amen, be blessed. And the nations, amen. Jacob is going to labor for livestock to make him a very wealthy man. Amen. Now we got verse number 28. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. Laban tells him that. And then verse 29 and 30 are self-explanatory. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was, a, it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. Sounds like he's boasting, ain't it? No, he ain't boasting. God's got his blessings all over that man. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Amen. Amen. I bless thee since my coming. And now when, when shall I provide for mine own house also? Verse 31, And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. Listen, he don't want no welfare. Amen. He's been out in the field working, man. Uh, he ain't going to stand in line and say, Give me a check, amen. Uh, give me this, or give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Hey, that's our millennials today. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Amen. So to get out there and work, 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 work. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all don't agree with that. That's fine. I don't care. Amen. But uh, he said there, I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me, for it was little which thou hast before I came and is now increased, verse 30, unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed me since my coming, and now when shall I provide for my own household also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt, give me, uh, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep the flock. And I will pass through all the flock by day today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. Doc starts out with a, no, uh, with a note that says, Notice in the verse the word speckled is connected with the word spotted. And he uh, gives a mark of the beast over there in appendix chapter 37, which we won't go tonight, because as we study through the Bible, we'll eventually get that. But I've always said that the Antichrist will be a Caesarean Jew. He's going to come out, uh, amen, part Jew and part Syrian, amen. And because of these Syrian women... There's not a one of them is a Jew. And yet they have birthed Jews to, uh, to Jacob. Amen. Twelve, uh, twelve boys that will become the twelve tribes of Israel. Amen. Uh, Jacob refuses uh, welfare. Notice the word speckle and spotted. Back in Genesis 30 in verse 6, if you go back there, watch this. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Who was this? This is from, uh, from, um, from uh, Bilhah, the maid of Rachel, calls this boy Dan. Dan is the first tribe to apostatize out of the twelve tribes of Israel. They go north, amen. They get into all kinds of apostasy. and But it costs them because in the tribulation, Dan is not even mentioned, amen. Because Dan, uh, uh, Doc believes, and I kind of believe it, but I haven't studied it out, that the Antichrist is going to come uh, through that, amen. And he's, he's alive now. If if we going out of here, man, any time he's got to be a an imitator or 
emulate, he's got to emulate the Lord Jesus Christ as to when he came at 30 years old, as when he dies at 33 and a half. He's an imitator, amen? And we're told to follow Jesus, not imitate or emulate him, amen? Follow, follow the Lord. And so we see here that that uh, takes place and it ties in over here with this speckled and spotted uh, cattle that Jacob's going to get for his hire. Verse number 33 is self-explanatory. He says, As so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, that uh, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. Amen. That's going to be mine. I, amen. I'm going to make it now. God's going to do some strange things now. Now, I don't understand all this stuff that I'm reading. Amen. I really don't. Uh, Laban is in agreement with, uh, with uh, uh, Jacob, and he's going along with it. Amen. Whatever you want, man. They come out speckled and spotted, that's yours. Amen. Whatever comes out the thing there, that belongs to me. Both men, verses 35 and 36, amen, are, in a, uh, in, are very wealth and need some distance between themselves. Watch this, verse 35. And he removed that day the goats that were ring straight and spotted, and all the she goats that were spotted, uh, speckled and spotted. Amen. Notice those spot, spot, spot. That's a, it's amazing. I'll give you this little note here in a minute. And every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he said, Three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laman's flock. So they got a three-day journey there. Does that sound like anybody else we read about? How about Lot and Abraham? They got so wealthy down there, man, they had to separate. Amen? And he said, if you want the right hand, I'll go to the left. Uh, uh, right hand, I'll go to the left. He said, if you want the left hand, I'll go to the right. And which way does he look? He points his tent towards Sodom. Amen? And so God finally gets a uh, uh, lot out of Abraham's life like he told him to. Amen. We have some double dealing and breeding going on now. This is wild to me. I've never worked on a farm or breeded cattle, sheep, etc. I just was a, country, a city boy that went up to my mother's sister's farm. And she had uh, cattle, she had pigs, she had sheep, she had dogs, she had chickens, she had ducks. And the three D's, David, Donald, and Dennis, by the time they left that farm after a, a week or whatever, amen, God, uh, Mama would send us up there, the cattle was going, Shh, I'm glad them boys are gone, Amen. All we did was throw rocks at the pigs, a stick hit the pigs with sticks. Every, we were just mean little city boys, amen. So I know nothing about the breeding or anything. The only thing I know is old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on this farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O. And a moo moo here and a moo moo there, here moo everywhere, moo moo, old MacDonald. That's the only farming I know about is singing the old MacDonald song, amen. I thought y'all might like that, amen. Amen. So verse 37, I just sang for you the old MacDonald, amen, because that's all I, all I know about farming, amen. And so uh, we did, but we boys were wild up there, and amen. I mean, we, uh, we, we did some crazy things. We catch turtles and porpoises, porpoises and everything out there in the woods, amen. Roll them down the hill as a rock, amen. <laughs> uh, jump up and down. We were mean little wicked boys, amen. Because we didn't have that stuff in the city, man. Amen. Might get a barking dog every now and then, but that was all. 
So you got some double dealing going on in this stuff here. Uh, I believe it. Amen. But I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't really understand it. But I realize that Jacob knows what he's doing. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and peeled white streaks. It spoke, uh, we would say streaks. Peeled skin to bark off of them in them, and made a uh, the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs. And when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. So conception, I mean, you see how God is in this thing, man? Uh, there are certain times of the years when the flock breeds and all that stuff like that. But he stuck that rod down in that trough there, straked it down, and them cattle and sheep would come up and they would conceive. Amen. That's wild, ain't it? You understand that? No, I don't. Amen. I thought you had to have a papa sheep and a mama sheep uh, to bring a little lamb out. Amen. Amen. And no doubt they had that. All right, we go on now to uh, verse 39. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle, ring steak, speckled, and spotted. Uh, the word spotted occurs seven times in the Bible. I wanted to tell you about that, okay? In this chapter, it's six times if you read verses 32, 33, 35, uh, 39, you'll count up six times where spotted is mentioned. And in the New Testament in Jude 23, and it's dealing with a spot uh, in the tribulation, amen. Uh, Doc says he thinks it's leprosy because it's coming back. Do you know the Middle East still has leprosy over there, man? Uh, as a matter of fact, Thailand and them places all around there, we used to have a missionary that came in, Brother Tillman, and his ministry was to the lepers. I mean, buddy, let me tell you, those lepers would put Americans to shame going to church. Some of them would uh, walk if they could. Others would ride on a skateboard type of thing to get to church. I mean, once they got saved, man, they were, oh, out they go, man. They, they went all out for Jesus. Amen. Amen. But in the tribulation, uh, that, uh, that disease uh, may be leprosy, amen, that's going to come on plaguing uh, uh, these folks in the great tribulation. I'm glad we'll be gone. Amen. Amen. So we see here that six times in the Old Testament, once in the New Testament, this word spot comes up. It's called spotted. Amen. Amen. And so he goes on to say there in verse number 39, uh, ring steak, speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring stake, and all the brown in the flock of Laban, and he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not into Laban's cattle. So he's in charge of everything, amen. That's how a Jew is. If he ain't in charge, he don't want nothing to do with it, amen. But he's in charge. And he's got Laban's cattle, and he's got his cattle. His cattle's getting fat, amen, dumb and happy, amen. And Laban, he's going to end up with a bunch of little old uh, things there, amen, because they're just, uh, yes, yeah, amen, skinny, skinny, amen. All right, uh, verse 40, uh, I think, it, and uh, yeah, then Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring stake and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put uh, his own flocks by themselves and put them not into Laban's cattle. And it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that J Jacob laid the rods between the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. Amen. Uh, amen. Now, that's wild. What's going on? I don't know. 
a rod. I know, I know Moses had a rod. Amen. And uh, that rod shows some kind of power. Amen. And, and Ro- Moses' rod, amen, he cast it down, turned into a serpent, and all the magicians did all that they did and cast them down, their, their rods, and all the serpents came around Moses' rod, and Moses' rod swallowed up all their rods, amen. They ate them up. Amen. I'd rather have God's rod, amen. Amen. And so we see here in verses uh, 40, amen. Uh, Dr. Ruck, verse 41, Dr. Ruckman gives us a note. Now, this entire chapter brings up the matter of birthmarks, amen, because of the ring streak and the spotted and, and all that stuff. And he gives this uh, where, uh, you know, like uh, my wife had Jesse. Uh, she was standing up as the as Jesse was coming out uh, between the legs, and, and her head now was almost out of the birth canal and everything. And so the midwife said, he, she's coming, she's coming. Well, she didn't know if she's, it's coming, it's coming. So she pushed her back, uh, uh, we put her back on the bed, but somehow Jessica ended up with a birthmark on the back of her neck. Amen, just from that pushing like that. And so birthmarks come up. It's a natural birthmark. It's not one, you know, put on there. But anyway, uh, Doc says, uh, where the woman, woman's diet has an effect on the birth of the child. Here animals are dealt with. When the Bible speaks of a generation uh, of the Antichrist and speaks about it in detail in Proverbs 30, 11 through 14, Deuteronomy 32, it makes some particular statements in Deuteronomy 32, 4 through 6, which should be studied along with 2 Peter 2, 13. The spot is probably connected with the inherited leprosy that comes with taking the mark of the beast. Amen. You know these crazy folks running around with 666, uh, some of them millennials, you know, you see... Uh, uh, you know, over there, a Tifa and all that stuff, and and uh, they're going down the road going, F Jesus, F Jesus, F Jesus, F Jesus, amen. amen. But they're going to get it one day, amen. Yeah. They're going to definitely get it one day. Yeah. It's praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise amen. Jesus, amen. 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 I was watching a video of one guy standing out there, man, as they were coming by going, F Jesus, F Jesus, F Jesus. He's standing out there saying, The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! And then on the back, on the back of the other side, though, somebody says, Jesus saves! Jesus saves! Amen. Absolutely. Right in the middle of Antifa or Black Lives Matters. Amen. That ain't no friendly group. I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. They're radical. Amen. Amen. Trying to destroy this great land that I've, the country I've lived in. Amen. I don't care. Come on in. Amen. Mike will take you on. Bless God. He'll kick you with that bad knee. Amen. So verse, uh, verse number uh, 42. But when the cattle were feeble... But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feeble were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle, maid servants, men servants, uh, camels, and asses. Amen. He's a wealthy man when he comes out of Laban. Amen. Now it cost him 20 years of his life. Amen. He didn't have a... Uh, 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 you know, any kind of uh, 20 years in the, like the military, 20 years, and a lot of them get out, you know. Huh? They come out with a check. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. But uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, raising uh, cattle, I mean, you got to get up early and go in and stay out late raising that type of stuff. Amen. I'm glad I go down to the meat shop and get my pork. Amen. I'd have to have to raise pigs and carry them slop out there all the time. 
uh, you know, Maggie, she'd carry that slop out there. Man, that was anything that was left over from the table went in the bucket and it fed the hogs. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking, man, did I eat that pork? Yeah, baby. Hey. Amen. Amen. Now, what do we learn from chapter number 30? Amen. Hard work brings results. Amen. Hard work brings results. Amen. You want to get somewhere? Listen, this, we're supposed to be capitalistic. Amen. Uh, you know, if you want to go out and work, amen, and, and work hard, amen, uh, you get results from it. 401ks and you can invest in the stock market and all these different things like that. I wish I'd have been a little more shrewder with my money. I like spending it. And that's the problem with me. Amen. Now, the blessings of God addeth no sorrow. Amen. We learn that God blessed Jacob. Amen. And the blessings of God, when they come, let them fall, man. Amen. By experience, people will know if you love God. You know, that Bible says, if any man love God, the same is known of him. Amen. The same what? If you love God. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go around saying how much you love God. If you love God, it'll radiate off you, man. They go, man, good night. That guy's face is too bright, man. Huh? The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. Amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 6. By experience, people will know if you love God or not. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. By your dealings with your neighbors. Amen. That Bible, you know, talks about us, uh, you know, living honestly. Amen. Finally, what sort of things are true, what sort of things are just, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, amen, so forth and so on. Uh, you know, think on these things, amen. Good things, amen. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the devil's going to try to tear you down, but don't let him do it, amen. Live honestly, amen. Live an honest life, amen. I've been trying to build a testimony now for 42 years. Amen. And I, and I tell you what, the devil's trying to tear me down, man. Amen. But he ain't going to do it. Amen. Amen. If I lose my children, amen, I'm still going on with Jesus. Now, that's where I told you this morning, watch what you say with your mouth. I said, I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm going to keep going to church if my girls stop coming to church. The Lord said, okay, I heard you. Amen. I'm praying for them. And that's all I can do today. Pray. By experience, people will know if you love God or not by your dealings with your neighbors. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, uh, if I went to your next door neighbor, would he know you're a Christian? <laughs> Amen. What about it? What about it? My next door neighbor is a Christian that lives down where I'm at. Now I got a new family's group that's moved in, military next door, amen. Trying to catch them at home is hard, amen. But uh, hey, you know, uh, we ought to be trying to live right and do right. All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. <laughs>